Hey guys, it's Arctic here at Old School Duels coming at you with a new deck profile that I'm actually very excited to show. And that is Monarchs. Okay, well I'm excited, but I'm not excited. I'm excited because... Uh, I'm excited because it's... It, I never liked Monarchs. Like, I still feel really, like, cheap using them because it's meta. I mean, like, I can't say it's because it's meta, but it's because it's cheap meta. And, like, the fact that, like, meta right now and, like, everything is, like, cheap to just get into and it's meta bothers me quite a bit. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't like using cheap meta. And... Uh, it's just I feel I feel I feel grimy, I feel grimy and gross, um, but it's good and I'm all but I'm excited because you know I'm gonna have meta on the channel I guess I'm, I'm you guys will not see a cosmos unless you guys won't see me doing a cosmos if I like deck profile someone's cosmos like if I went to locals or something like that or like I have a friend that played meta or played cosmos and he wanted me to, to do a deck profile of him, I'd be like, sure, yeah, whatever. But I will never build Cosmos, because I I hate Cosmos so much. But yeah, we're going to get into it. And also, one more thing before I get into it. Um, ignore the mess in the back. I just got a new setup, like, two days ago. Um, that's why the camera's far away. And also, because uh, I got a new desk and everything else. So it's just, I'm doing, I, I just a bunch of stuff. But yeah, we're going to get into it. So obviously... Um, I'm running XYZ Monarchs, or Extra Deck Monarchs, whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, Extra Deck Monarchs. And I'm running three Erebus, uh, just for, like, the fact of, you know, I can go into him really fast, and if I get him off turn one, uh, I can knock my... I can knock my opponent's hand down to, like, three cards. So they start off playing with, like, three to four cards. Um, but I can get... If I get him off and him alone, I'm only going to get one card off. Or they're only going to be playing five card opening hand. Which is always fun to play. Um, but yeah, I'm playing 3 Erebus uh, for the overlay plays because I can get him out fast. Plus I can get Ether out fast because uh, I'm playing 3. So that's why, you know, like XYZ combos. I'm not running any Mega. And I'm also, I have full extra deck and side deck as well. So, you know, I'm going to you know, show you guys that. But I'm not playing any Mega Monarchs, which some people might disagree with. But, I mean, that's just me. I don't like playing Mega Monarchs. Just because I think they're kind of bad for the deck. Um, so, yeah. That's that's it for, like, the big Monarchs. I'm also playing two Ida. Uh, Ida the Heavenly Squire. Um, three in Extra Deck Monarchs is too much. And playing one is... I don't see her enough. Um, even though I am playing two Idos. Just two Ida is just, to me, is just... Perfect consistency. I see it enough. Plus, I can get its plays off pretty fast. Um, and I'm also playing two Edos. Um, for you people that don't know, Ida gets out Edos, so you can go for uh, a big play if you don't run Domain. Um, plus, I'm playing one Karaz, because uh, I only own one Karaz. I would be playing two Karaz, but I don't. I only own one Karaz, so I found my substitute, which is just Majesty's Fiend, which is a great substitute uh, for any Monarchs. For, for me, it's a great substitute. If you don't run a, a second Karaz or own a second Karaz, or if you don't play Karaz at all, I mean, you could just play two Vanity's Fiend or Majesty's Fiend, call it a day. Um, just for the fact of, like, it's searchable, definitely searchable, um, and you're more, you're always going to have one tribute, and you can always, uh, the way I play the deck, you can get this off, and it, you don't have to worry about Fiendish Chains or anything like that. Um, and yeah, so that's it for the Monarch Engine, for the Monarch Monster Engine. Um, I also play two Super Quantum Red Layer just because I can special it out. It's a five, so I can go for the for the uh, rank five plays, and also uh, I can special out there and get a summon off no problem and still have my normal. And then I run one uh, Super Quantum Blue Layer to just search out red, and that's really about it. That's the only reason why I run it. Run one blue, and then I also play uh, for two monsters that. Uh, are not Monarch or Quantum. I play two Valor uh, just for effect negation because effect negation is very important um, to just play uh, running against anything. Two, two, two Valor is nice. Plus, I also have it made so you can sync with them too. So if you really wanted to, you could 
uh, sync with the Veilers. I don't really sync that much in the deck, um, but I have them in there just because. Uh, and then obviously I'm running three Pantheism because Pantheism of the Monarch is just amazing. Draw and search of Monarch Spell or Traps. Pff, godly heavenly. Um, and then I'm running three Tenacity. Uh, three Tenacity of the Monarch. Um, Somebody I want to add real quick a Pantheism and Tenacity. Um, for people that uh, play Monarchs, uh, obviously you're either just going to, when you do your Pantheism searches, you're obviously just going to either reveal three or if you really wanted to, you could... Um, you could just search one and show two tenacity. I think personally that's a good play, um, but people that go against monarchs are probably just watching this just like get an idea of what monarchs can do. I would suggest running, uh, picking the tenacity. Yes, there is a minus because I'm going to tell you now they have the tenacity, so they can go into the that just gives them a for sure target for prime, uh, for prime of the monarchs or the prime monarch. Um, it gives you a for sure target to banish for Prime Monarch, but it also gives you an insight to their hand just in case, you know, you want to stop the summon or anything like that. Um, be prepared for summons and shit like that. So that's just me. And then also something I want to add about Pantheism. Um, I kind of thought it was obvious if you just read the card, but I ran into someone that didn't know this. When you search the three Monarch spell or trap cards, they don't have to have the same name. You can search three with the same name. So if you really wanted to, you could be like, Pantheism. Okay, search three tenacity because I want tenacity that bad. Um, I would never do that because to me that's kind of dumb. But that's what you could do. Um, that's the ruling for. That's literally the effect of the card. You search three spell or trap uh, monarch spell or trap cards, um, and they don't have to have the same name. They don't have to have the same name. Uh, and if you wanted to search three with the same name, go for it. Um, next card I run is obviously. Three of the Monarchs storm forth. Um, it's amazing. You just say, okay, you have, especially for when you're playing against Cosmos, you're just like, okay, Danklaw, or Danklaw, uh, Dark Destroyer, um, pff, I'm going to tribute it. Now I'm going to use it for something stupid. Um, so, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, yeah. Also, Return of the Monarchs. I play three. Some people might say run one. Some people might run two. I play three. Um, yes, it, when it's on field, it takes away from, uh, your plays, your, um, your overlaying plays, but it also, it gives you searches like there's no tomorrow <laughs> in reality. As long as the summon goes through, you're just like, search, search, search. Um, so yeah, I play three. Um, if you're not going to run two, um, uh, I mean, normally some people run three, uh, Return of the Monarchs because they're playing two Karaz or, you know, I still think it's pretty usable when you're playing Majesty's Fiend and Return and Karaz just because I want to search out Majesty's Fiend to get effects, to negate effects and stuff. Um, but there's that. There's definitely that. Um, so definitely take that into play or into uh, into effect. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it on that one. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's what I'd say. Um, play three so you can search out these guys, and obviously you can search out uh, these two. Um, but if you're not running, if you're only running one Karaz or the Majesty's Fiend, don't even, just one, one return. I'm going to tell you that now. Just one, one return. Or one return. I am playing three domain, though. I did look up a bunch of deck profiles, and some people said run one Monarch, or, uh, run one domain, you know, because you're running extra deck, so your tribute monsters won't go off. Or, like, your opponent can still summon from extra deck. I think playing three just so you can see it faster and you can definitely reveal the monster so you only have to do one tribute, I think for me personally. Um, but if you're gonna if you're not playing extra deck monarchs, play this at three. Definitely play it at three. I'm running two Itali just so I can see blue layer faster. I know that's really weird. Um, I'm only playing one blue layer, but the card is still on it's still, you know, you're still gonna see blue layer. Like with blue layer's effect you can just send blue layer back, so this card's always gonna be live. Unless you misplay it. And then I play one Frost Blast of the Monarchs just so I can top our blow up back row. Um, s uh, face down back row. Because why not? I can. It's definitely a card that you can side out if you really want to. You also have domains if you really wanted to. Like you can honestly take out two domains if you really need to. Um, but Frost Blast, um, it's good for just hitting back row. Um, just so you don't have to deal with them because I'm not running March of the Monarchs. Um, but this is definitely a good card if you want to side. Don't deem it necessary to play in the main deck. Um, and you need something to set out, definitely set it out for sure. 
Um, that's it for the spells. Uh, it's very, it's a very spell heavy deck, um, which is, you know, kind of depressing. But uh, oh well, who cares? Um, and traps, it's pretty simple. Five traps. Three of the prime monarchs. Uh, some people might say run two. I say play three. Two for your overlays uh, and your tributes. One to just start sending stuff back and get your draws and all that fun stuff. And I play two escalation because escalation summoning on their turn. It's amazing, especially if you search up the Magitus Fiend. You're just like, okay, you summon. Okay, I activate Escalation. I tribute one guy. Now you have no effects. So it's pretty, it's pretty trolly. Um, that's it for the main decks. We're we'll moving on to the extra deck, which, um, in reality, it's very just kind of like whatever you want to play. Fives in this build, it's five sixes and eights, um, and sinks are sevens and eights. Um, but it's really kind of whatever. I'm playing, obviously, I'm playing the Adrius Keeper of the Armageddon and Tears Keeper of Genesis. The, I'm playing the Twins because uh, I can do fives. Uh, Pleiades, uh, Constellar Pleiades. Um, something that I didn't catch on to, and when I was looking at deck profiles, they are light targets. They are your light monsters for the overlays. Because I kept, like, seeing people like, oh, yeah, play Pleiades, you know, you got your lights. And I'm like, I don't, the, the lights I have, they're sixes. I can't go into them. And the fives that I... The five monsters I do have, they're fire. How can I go into Pleiades? I completely forgot that they they have all those, um, the Prime Monarch is a monster. Well, I didn't forget it was a monster, but I forgot that it had an attribute. I was like, oh yeah, duh, you're an idiot. Um, and then playing one, number 61 Volcosaurus, just to deal life point damage if you really want to. Um, and Shark Fortress drops for game, like, hardcore. You're just like, drop Shark Fortress, detach, target something that big, and you're just like, punch, punch. So Shark Force is amazing. I play one Super Quantum Mech Beast, Magna Liger. It's amazing. I love this card. <laughs> just Magna Liger just pops stuff all day, every day. I really don't go into that much, but when I do, I'm just like, punch, punch. And then I play one Constellar Ptolemy M7. You could do your sixes for this guy, or if your, cons uh, your Pleiades runs out of materials, you could just drop M7 on there and still be able to hit stuff back. And then I play one Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger. Um, because I have all these fives and or these fives plus the one six, I could just literally just drop this on top and start dealing piercing damage. Uh, and then I play one number twenty three Lancelot, the Dark Knight of the Underworld. For you people that don't know what this card does, uh, I'll just read it off straight to you. Uh, two level eights, uh, so it's a generic eight. Uh, this card can attack your opponent directly while it has X Y Z materials, which is amazing. It's two K attack, so you could just be like psh, punch directly two K. Um, plus also. Uh, when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy it, which is amazing. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a spell or trap card or another monster's effect is activated, you can detach one, negate the activation. It doesn't destroy it, but definitely negates it. So, if you really wanted to, uh, if you can get Shark Fortress on field, summon Shark Fortress. If you can get two eights on field, you know, you Shark Fortress effect, or effect, punch a lot, punch over a monster if you have to. Um... And then summon Lancelot. Or if you wanted to, if you could only get two eights on field, uh, get two eights on field, punch for the 28, uh, then summon that if you really want to just lock down your opponent. Or if you really want to be trolly, punch for 2k directly, pop a monster, and then just sit on that. It's really, this card itself is very versatile, versatile in the deck. I don't play Felgran because I play something else that's pretty nasty. Uh, but you could play Felgran in the deck as well. But I love playing this. Lancelot is just MVP. I wouldn't say MVP overlay, but a very important overlay to play. It's always fun to play. Um, then I'll play 1107. I know what you're like, 107, really? Like, you have so many other options to play. Um, but I'm playing 107 because, not even because of 107, because of this guy right here. Number 95, Galaxy Eyes, Dark Matter Dragon. You don't get the banish effect, which is saddening, but I don't really care. I get to attack twice for 4K if I really wanted to drop a monster uh, summon it on field, drop a monster by just running into it, because that's the only way I can deal with it. Um, drop a monster, and then punch directly for 4k. You could deal a lot of damage with him alone, so it's amazing. Um, and then for my synchros, I play one Michael Arch Lightsworn, or, uh, the Arch Lightsworn, um, which is amazing, because you can just start banishing monsters. Plus, you know, you can also play Black Rose Dragon. Just start blowing shit up. And another big reason why I'm playing... Uh, an arch or the Michael I can go in sevens plus scrap dragon because I want to pop stuff uh, and crystal wing synchro dragon I know you're like why not play just why not just play clear wing 
Uh, because I don't own a clear wing. Plus, also, Crystal Wing, I pulled... I got another trade, so I was like, I'm just going to run it. Why not? Oh, uh, that's it for the extra deck. We're going to move on to the side deck. And the side deck is completely up to you. This, these are just suggestions that I have. So if you want to play them. I play one Raigeki because Raigeki. Uh, play two MST because I don't really have MST popping stuff. I don't have, like, Spell Trap popping stuff. I play two Forbidden Graveyard because... Uh, it's Graveyard... Negate Graveyard effects if, say, if you're facing BA. If you really want to just be trolly. Uh... And Majesty's Fiend just isn't cutting. You're not saying Majesty's uh, enough, and it's just not cutting it for you. You can play Forbidden Graveyard because you have plenty of cards you can just toss in Grave. Like you got Pantheism, you got uh, the Prime Monarch that you could definitely just throw away in the Graveyard with Forbidden Graveyard effect, and for just say no to Graveyard effects. Plus, I'm playing two March of the Monarchs. Um, I side decking the March of the Monarchs um, just because. I mean, why not? If I'm really playing against something that's really like hardcore touchy touchy against my monsters. I'm just like, okay, let me just side in March of the Monarchs. Um, because it negate it prevents tributed monsters uh, from being targeted uh, and destroyed by uh, card effects. Um, so yeah, targeted or destroyed by card effects. So it's really, really good card in the deck. Um, but you can't, again, you can't special summon from extra deck. Which is very, very uh, just angling. So it's whatever. Um, and then that's it for the spells. Uh, the extra deck. I'm playing what the third escalation. If you really, really need the escalation, I would suggest playing the third one. Two traps on if you're playing a very trap heavy deck. Um, two imperial iron wall if you're facing cosmos, just to say no. Uh, and if you're playing um, a spell heavy deck or pendulums in general, just play the curse seal of forbidden spell. I play three. I side deck three because I hate seeing this deck against pendulum monsters. Is just very bad against the deck, honestly. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for the deck. Like I said, extra deck and side deck is completely up to you. Um, that's just what I play in the side deck. Side deck is virtually completely up to you. Um, I mean, in reality, the whole deck is up to you. Um, but that's the whole deck. Um, I really enjoy playing it. Um, like I said, I feel really grimy playing the deck, honestly. So it's whatever. But I play it just so I have meta. If I really want to go to a big, big tournament, um, and that's really about it. Don't really like to some other videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I just completely skipped a part. All the links to social media is in the description below. Um, if you guys actually like, uh, how far the camera is so you can, like, fully... I mean, before you could see, like, the full, like, you know, play mat and everything like that. Um, but if you guys like it, if you guys don't like it, go ahead and post in the comments below. If you want to see close-ups of cards, I could definitely set that up. Like I said, it's just... I got a new setup in my room. Um, so... Definitely... Definitely will be changing stuff or changing the way I do recordings. Um, but if you guys, if I don't see any complaints or anything like that, then I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Um, so yeah, so don't like, share, and subscribe videos. Thank you, and have a wonderful, beautiful night, day thing, or whatever.